The Lord's house is moving to the metaverse. Worship, communion, even baptisms heading to the virtual world. Some pastors say it's cheaper because they don't have to pay for a brick and mortar church and it allows congregants who can't leave their homes to join in. NBC's Savannah Sellers shows us how it works. This is Pastor Jason Poling on a Sunday morning. All right, good morning, everybody. And this is Pastor Jason Poling on a Sunday afternoon. All right, we can get started now. Well, his avatar, anyway. He's the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church of Yuba City, California, and now also of the metaverse. All of these people from all these different tribes. Each Sunday, after leading two services in person, he heads to his office, pops on his VR headset, and preaches to his other congregation. Hmm, good question. Volunteers built the digital world of Cornerstone VR Church to look just like the real one, even down to the stained glass windows. But the beauty of the metaverse? You can design it however you'd like. No worldly limitations. I like how here you can do church outside. Yep. Never rain. 15 years of IRL pastoring, yeah, we'll call it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And what makes you decide we should get this church in the metaverse? Craziness, a, little, a lot of craziness, <laughs> right? I've always loved tech, uh, but people come there to try to connect with others, try to, you know, uh, try to deal with some of the issues that they're facing. And so I was like, man, as a pastor, that's my bread and butter. I, I want to help people who are hurting. The pastor says that for him, it's a form of missionary work. He's reaching people he says would never wander through the doors of a physical church. The beauty of it is that they just go onto the application or the program just to hang out, see what's up, and they see in the event, oh, there's a church. And where they probably wouldn't come to a brick and mortar church, because it's just maybe awkward for them. They're like, oh, I can click in and click out. If it's weird, you know, they're doing something crazy. And so it's, it's easy to, to jump in. Now those visitors are becoming full-fledged members of Cornerstone, like Alice, who joins in from the UK every week. I used to hide in the walls, but I'm not hiding in the walls anymore because there's obviously none around here. Would you have ever found church, do you think, in the real world if it wasn't for finding it here in the metaverse? But I would have been very reluctant. The virtual reality version of Cornerstone offers everything the real one does. Small groups, fellowship, even sometimes better conversation than the real world. I think some of the anonymity that's initially there allows people to be more open about their life. I mean, it's amazing how quickly somebody will go deep with me about their life within five minutes of meeting them. They even keep practices that might surprise you, like baptism and communion. Those who are curious have plenty of options to choose from. Over the last six months, the number of churches entering VR has exploded, up an estimated 500%. It's grown in popularity so quickly, there was even a Metaverse Church Summit this year to help support pastors. One major benefit this new frontier has... It's a a lot cheaper. <laughs> so churches had to spend an enormous amount of money to have a building and, and all the stuff that comes with that. And in the metaverse, I mean, it's you know, 300 bucks for a headset. And for those who can't physically make it to the church they've long loved, that headset can make all the difference in the world. That was the case for Thomas McFerrin, a longtime member of Cornerstone Church IRL, now helping lead their virtual community. I had a heart attack and I couldn't make it back to church. It was just really too difficult to walk and, and get around. How much has church in the metaverse meant to you? Everything. I, I, it, it gives me purpose. It's an outlet that I, I can't even ever imagine before. For the news, I'm Savannah Sellers.